Hey guys, uh, hello and welcome to my first ever FL Studio 12 tutorial. Um, this came out quite a while ago, I guess. Uh, I think it was the 20th of April. So we're about a month into the new FL Studio. Um, I meant to do this video quite a while ago, but I'm um, doing it now. Uh, just been busy with school, year 12. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you know what that's like. Um, anyway, let's get right into it. We've got, obviously it looks quite a lot different to uh, what we're used to I guess. I guess we might as well just have a look at what it used to be in uh, FL Studio 11. I, li I quite like this opening thing better to be honest. In FL Studio 12 it's just a berry or whatever you would call their logo. Um, so obviously uh, this looks quite a lot cooler I guess. Um, obviously uh, built for the touch generation I guess uh, laptops are being touch screen nowadays um, so I think that was one of the reasons they sort of did this um, aesthetic uh, redo I guess um, but yeah it looks looks quite nice um, anyway what have we got uh, so obviously they changed all this up here this just looks a lot, uh, the uh, step sequences looks a lot cleaner. These look a lot cleaner. I've also, a uh, pretty big change I noticed was to good old uh, 3x oscillator, three times oscillator, whatever. Um, looks very different to, uh, hang on, we might as well pull it up in here. Uh, this is what we used to have. And this is what we have now. So obviously very different. Still got the main things, just a bit bigger. Uh, waveforms, you know, detune, fine tuning, whatever. Um, yeah, so we got that. Uh, another big thing is the mixer. Uh, that's changed a lot. Um, let's see. What have we got? This is how it used to look. Um, I don't know. I kind of like this as well. But this is the setup I'm running on. Wide, wide 3. There's a compact which is pretty good if you're running a lot. Compact 2, again pretty good. Uh, whoops, wide, wide 2, wide 3, and extra large. So, I mean, they, they would take a bit of getting used to from um, what you used to have, but uh, it still looks pretty cool and it's um, got this new routing system as well, which makes routing a lot easier. Uh, so what can we do? We click this and then that'll route this one, uh, whatever I have here, it would be the kick into the snare, hat, kick into the hat. Um, uh, obviously, um, dry wet, I guess is what you call that. Uh, how much is being sent into there, which is pretty cool. Just, so you just click this arrow, click it again, and it, it'll deactivate. So that's pretty cool. Um, your routing system, very uh, very useful. Um, so we've got... This here messed with me a little bit, what we're going into. This, so this is play, stop, and record, as it usually is. And then there used to be uh, two little buttons you could click between pattern and song. And then... This is what you do to do that. Now there's only one button. So that's pattern we're on. And then song. So um yeah, I get that's how that works. Um not <laughs> not that hard to uh do once you uh notice it, but it took me probably five minutes to figure out how to do that again. Um We have uh, the plugin picker. Uh, sorry, the pattern picker. Usually, it's uh, up here. Let's have a look. It's up here. Pattern one. Now you got to right-click up here to get that same thing, and the plus is there as opposed to here. So yeah, that's pretty much the same. Um, another thing I uh, noticed there is that is you can't add an audio track from um, 
this add bar up here, which is also new. Usually it used to be channels. Now it's add. So that's a new thing. It used to be channels, but you could always add an audio clip here. Automation clip, you could do all these things. I only really ever added audio clips. But now it's um you're just gonna have to uh drag and drop it into the playlist and then you'll get a thing like uh not like this. I'll show you how it goes. You will get this, which is you'll see different colored slightly to this, so you get another audio clip. Um, well, you get a regular audio clip, you won't get this one when you drag and drop. Otherwise, you could just do this. I, I prefer this method to be honest. I clone one of these. Um, do that, yeah, find my sample, whatever, um, and then use that. Um, you can also, of course, use the browser, which was something I never used before, um, FL Studio 12, but now I guess it's really just key to use it, because it'll just make things a whole lot easier. So I'll try and show you, get a good old kick loop, like that. That's That's pretty easy to do. Um, don't know why I never used the browser before, but you know, there it is. Uh, um, yes, yeah, so what else we got? Uh, this next up, you'll note, uh, when you open FL Studio 12, you notice, you will notice you don't have your, uh, plugins here and you, uh, can't put more. There's usually a more option. Let's go back. Uh, add one more. There's usually that, which is how I got all mine into here. Um, so now what you have to do is go over here to this plug. You'll have installed, effects generators and installed. You, if you go to effects, uh, VST, if you have VSTs or VST3, whatever you've got, um, you'll see all the plugins, but they're not necessarily effects plugins. So A and A obviously isn't an effects plugin. Uh, and I made the mistake of going into effects and adding ANA. So now I have ANA in the uh, effects slot and it can't do anything. Um, so you don't want to do that, but how you would do it with an actual effect like Devaster Distortion, you go add to plugin database, flag as favorite, and uh, obviously you click yes. I'm going to click no because I already have it. And uh, you will get it in this menu in the mix, uh, mixer plugins, uh, effects plugins sort of area. And obviously, likewise, you get out of effects, you go to generators and uh, VST again. Now I can do A and A, add to plugin database, and it will add in here, yeah, like so. Um, other than that, there's not really a lot I could t talk to you about. I've been using it for a month or so, I guess. Um, yeah, so I haven't really had too much trouble with it. I will mention, uh, I don't know if it's just my computer, but it's a lot laggier than FL Studio 11, like, like marginally laggier. My CPU has like no power in this one. Um, other than that, there is a little bug I've noticed uh, when I open some of my projects plugins uh, aren't found uh, it'll say it's either it's usually some big plugin um, like contact or something it'll uh, it just won't register that so what I recommend doing is uh, you don't replace the plugin obviously just close it close your um, project and reopen it as time consuming as that can be um, you won't lose your uh, sound so if it's a big synthesizer that um, FL Studio can't open again for some reason you won't lose that sound you were working on um, other than that uh, all I can say is the bugs like that might have been fixed because I think there is a new version out I'm still running 12.0 whatever it is um, but yeah I hope that was useful uh, hope you guys are you know enjoying FL Studio 12 um, thank you for watching and I hope this was helpful.